the outbreak is still continuing, but it has improved significantly from where we were a couple of months ago. Throughout October, we were running at about 21 outbreaks a week on average. That dropped to 14 in November, and we've had four outbreaks uh, in this week and four outbreaks in the previous week. So the rate of new infections is coming down, but uh, we're still not out of the woods yet. This game farm in Worcestershire is trying to take no chances with bird flu. Washing boots, nets covering open pens. It's overwintering more than 100,000 pheasants. Paul Jevons is also the president of the Game Farmers Association. Even though he has his own birds, he still needed to buy eggs in 2022 for his game farm and was gazumped. The one probably good thing that came out of Avon Flu was that we managed to share the risk with our customers. We got customers to buy their own eggs so they knew how much they were paying from Spain. And so they knew the costs uh, and they could calculate into their shoot costs. But it was almost a perfect storm because there was gazumping, profiteering. We were coming out of coronavirus. We had Brexit. We had the Ukrainian problems. So all our costs were, were unbelievable. Adam Gwillem runs three commercial shoots, but he can only operate two this season as he couldn't source partridge eggs or chicks. His business normally puts on 100 days in a season across the three shoots. This year it will be 55 days across two shoots. It obviously impacted our clients as well with increased price per, per bird for shooting. But generally we, we have managed to survive quite well. Shooting quality has been good and numbers of birds have been good. It, the problems that we have found are that we've had to isolate those numbers that we have managed to get in certain areas of the shoot, which has meant that shooting pressure has been an issue as we've got through the season. Businesses are advised to be cautiously optimistic for this year. I think there's cautious optimism. Uh, we've learned an awful lot this year. We've come through a terrible outbreak. Uh, there's been a huge impact on the sector, but we've survived. We're still shooting and we're looking forward to next year with, as I say, cautious optimism. There have been some improvements to the disease control measures that the government uh, puts in place. We've had some positive changes to the way the compensation scheme works. We've had uh, changes to the definition of what constitutes poultry and what doesn't. So the type of disease control measures that are employed. So a lot of backyard flocks now are being treated differently to how they were being treated a year ago. Paul's pheasant eggs are incubated and hatched on site in their own hatchery. They also rear a similar number of partridges, all from chicks hatched in their own hatchery from eggs bought in from French suppliers. Paul has already ordered 50% of next season's partridge eggs from Spain to reduce the risk of being wholly dependent on France. He's optimistic for the 2023 season. Well, we did a sort of planning a year ago. We thought if we can't rear any pheasants due to uh, avian flu, uh, that we could perhaps just do partridges, which don't seem so susceptible. And we probably do 30% less birds if we only did partridge. We've, we've got all the equipment if we need to do that. But I'm very pleased at the moment there seem to be less cases of avian flu about, so we're going to go for it. Despite the challenges of bird flu in 2022, Dominic believes this year will be brighter. We are cautiously optimistic that vaccines will be a realistic possibility in the next few years. Uh, that situation was not the case 12 months ago. So we have reasons to be optimistic about the future, but there's no doubt that there is still the potential for us to have a few tough years ahead of us before we get to the point where vaccines are in everyday use, for example, if that comes to pass, and we'll have to wait and see. There are less cases about, and, and I think even though we've got it in Worcester a few miles away, it doesn't seem to have spread any further. I, I don't really get it. it. It all seems to be about stocking rates and ages of birds. As a game rearer, I'm not worried about rearing them. Uh, I do feel that very highly stocked release pens later in the autumn uh, in wet areas of the country are at a higher risk. We've had um, a number of difficult years over the last three, three years with COVID and then the COVID recovery year and then, then to be slapped with bird flu issues this year is has been difficult but um, we are we're very hopeful and determined to to provide hopefully the our best season yet for the latest on bird flu and information on the current restrictions see the link below